Today I'm with Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner, director of GBAC, and we're going to talk about travel. More and more people are traveling. And in fact, the CDC has said something recently that all travelers should be aware of. Gavin, tell us about that. Yes, this is very important for everyone, not just the cleaning industry, Jeff, but everyone. Just this month, February 2021, the CDC has said that they're seeing more and more people travel. Planes, trains, buses, public transportation is all increased. And they made a mandatory order that you must wear a mask on public transportation. But they've also made a very clear statement from the US Centers for Disease Control or CDC that airports, bus and train stations and rest stops, you know you know how frightened I am from public, public toilets, are all places travelers can be exposed to the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the one that causes COVID-19, through respiratory droplets or on surfaces. That's on the CDC website, Jeff. It's just come out February 2021. Gavin, in a facility, an airport, a bus terminal, whatever, you have different kinds of surfaces. Can you comment on what the coronavirus does with those? That's a great question, Jeff. And the two best medical journals in the world, the New England Journal of Medicine and the Lancet, have published information on how long the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the virus that causes COVID-19, actually survives on surfaces. And it's different. All surfaces are different. So it could be anywhere from hours. Um, Paper uh, and tissue paper, it may be three hours. Copper, four hours. Cardboard, up to 24 hours. Now, get this, Jeff. This is where we go from hours to days. The SARS-CoV-2 virus can survive on wood for two days. Stainless steel for three days. Plastic and glass for three to four days. Now, paper money, four days. But also, Jeff, remember, we all, we're all wearing masks at the moment. The, the New England Journal and The Lancet also published information that showed that the SARS-CoV-2 virus survives on the outside of your mask for up to seven days. And this is why it's so important that we, as a clean industry, we focus, based on our risk assessments, on those high-touch surfaces, and we clean and disinfect them based on that, that risk assessment to decrease amount of virus that's on those services. And again, when you look at the, 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 the information that's been coming out from government and other organizations, they would, they would say things like, we think, or it's thought that services don't play a role. What they're trying to say is they don't have the information. Now they're saying, yes, as we see more and more people travel, we have to focus on cleaning and disinfecting those high touch surfaces and we do it properly. Okay, so let's talk about travel. Should, if I wanna go on a trip, should I travel? Well, this is a good question because it's really important that everyone should be starting to understand this is how I need to know my travel risk, my own personal travel risk. We know, Jeff, again, from the U.S. Center for Disease Control, the CDC website, they they will tell us travel increases your chances of getting and spreading SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19. CDC says on their website, they recommend that you do not travel at this time. You delay travel. You stay at home to protect yourself. But we know that's not what happens in the real world. We know that many of us must travel. And if we must travel, we need to understand those travel activities that are safe or safer. And we need to take certain steps to protect ourselves as well as our loved ones, as well as people we're traveling with, to, from the SARS being exposed and being infected from SARS-CoV-2 virus. Okay, so that tells us what to do if I have to travel. But what if I've been vaccinated? What about well, that? This, this, is, this is important. And so if you've been vaccinated, you need to understand that uh, you need to wait at least two weeks after if it's your second dose with the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. We know the Johnson Johnson vaccine is coming out will be one dose, but at the moment it's a two dose vaccine. You need to wait two weeks, 14 days after getting your vaccine dose uh, before you travel, because it takes time for your body to build protection after any vaccination. Uh, You need to, um, again, wear a mask. You need to follow both the state and local jurisdictions, those requirements. You need to avoid crowds. You need to wash your hands. You need to take extra supplies. But you also need to avoid anyone who could be sick. You need to avoid, Jeff, touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Now, the big challenge that I find right now for those that have been vaccinated, you will get a vaccination, vaccination certificate. That vaccination certificate has no unique identification information on there for you, but your name. So anyone could use your vaccination certificate. This is what ISSA, the GBAC team would like to recommend to everyone right now. 
when you get vaccinated, when you get your vaccination certificate, put it right on there, your own address. There's not a space on there for you. Just write your address. Write down your cell phone number. So if someone says to you, I don't believe you that this is your vaccination certificate, you can say, call that cell phone number. And if that phone goes off in your pocket, it's you. Also put down other identification numbers, your driver's license number. And if you're traveling internationally, I would highly recommend you put down your US passport number or any other or any passport you, that you're, you're traveling with. Put that down on the vaccination certificate. But this is information that every individual needs to do on their own because no one's telling you to do this. All right, Gavin. How can the cleaning industry help? Well, I think this is important, Jeff. We are seeing through the ISSA um, Global Biorisk Advisory Council, the GBAC team through our GBAC STAR facility accreditation program, the number of airports, the bus terminals and bus stations, the, the public transportation networks, the hubs at the moment that are contacting us, asking us for assistance. Every terminal, every um, station, every bus, every train, every plane, you know, again, this is where crowding can occur. And it's so important that the cleaning industry becomes together as a collective coalition, as a body, as a team, and says, yes, there's going to be risk out there, but we have the tools, we have the equipment, we have the disinfectants and the cleaning products, we have the knowledge and the skills to decrease the amount of virus, which we call the viral load, to decrease the amount of virus in your terminal, in your bus, in your train, in your plane, to make it safer. This is all about making indoor spaces safer, Jeff, as we move you know, again into 2021. So it's really important that we help as much as we can, everyone within the clean industry, to be good advocates, to be good citizens, and to do what can work and what can help protect and save lives. Well, Gavin, great information. The public needs to know this. Thank you for your time today. You're welcome, Jeff. Have a good day.